Good morning, everyone. Good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, and welcome to this week's Weekly Energy Boost. My name is Eli Sheva. I'm here with David, as well as Eitan Yardeni, who we've had on the show. Oh boy! Oh gosh! I did not do that. Holy <laughs> shit! That's a yeah. rookie mistake. Yeah, that's. I'm so nervous. <laughs> we have Eitan Yardeni here on the show this morning. Eitan's been on the show um, a couple times, and we snagged him. Hopefully. After we found that he had the antibodies, we just said, "Got to come on the show." Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, le- I'm less than six feet away from Eitan, but nine feet away from David this morning, <laughs> and we're excited to share with you the secrets to becoming unlimited on this week's show. We do this every week. We're here to share with you the most practical, most powerful, most relevant wisdom and assignments that comes from the wisdom of Kabbalah. David, Eitan, and I are all teachers at the Kabbalah Center. Eitan is in New York normally, but we got him in while he's in LA to join us this morning. Uh, Eitan, I know that this is one of your favorite subjects. It's I think it's one of the the favorite subject of all motivational speakers, right? Why are we so limited? We know we need to think more positive thoughts. We know we need to think beyond uh, the rational, limited perceptions of what we're capable of, but it's probably the hardest thing we have to do. Yes, and the biggest question really is, so if we hear from so many speakers and teachings and self-help and spiritual messages that think big will attract big, think small will attract small. So why is it so complicated just think big? Everyone, a housewife, a simple worker, a person, a small business owner that's struggling to take the business to the next level, go home, Think big for 10 minutes, close your eyes, meditate, and that's it. So what I actually, my intention, as one of my intention for today, is to actually together to share the true secrets beneath just think big. What's preventing us from thinking big? Drop it, drop it for us. Give us one, (laughs) give us us top on your list right now. (laughs) the, The bottom line is, who is running the show? Our thoughts or our belief system? Who is really running the show? The belief system that we all have is running the show. So I might have big thoughts and big aspiration, but it's not enough. So let's speak about one secret. Okay, mm-hmm. one secret. Uh, in By the, the way, it looks system. like I'm facing every, away from everybody. I just want our audience to know I am facing them. <laughs> it looks like I'm looking away from Eitan. I just had to throw that in there. Go, uh, go ahead, Eitan. <laughs> so, um, so actually, what if, if you look at the building, you know, you have a 10-story building and you would like to expand it to be a 1,000-story building. So what's preventing us from having just built on top of it another 990 floors? No. You need to build sufficient foundation. And the foundation you don't see, but without that, you cannot build a huge building. The same thing. In order to actually manifest big thing, uh, to be limitless, and to have the energy of limitless, you need to build a foundation. What is the foundation? Within the belief system. What is it about the belief system that causes us not to think big? Rav Ashlag, the teacher of Rav and the teacher of the Rav, the founder of all the vision of the Kabbalah Center, tell us, to really think big, it's actually to believe how much I believe I can handle Difficulties will determine how big stuff I can manifest. Means, if I believe deep inside in my belief system, it is tough for me to handle to handle rejection. If I will be more successful, I won't be able to handle the pain of judgment that connects to success. So the lack of belief that I can handle rejection, pain, humiliation, hardship, difficulties, potential failures, challenges, 
conflict with friends, conflict with partners. The fact that I don't believe I can handle challenges, I can lose it, that's what actually limiting my ability to accomplish. More I can believe I can handle difficulties, greater my vessel and capability to be limitless. So let's start this as a subject. <laughs> well, well, but no, that's good for me. Well, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm, I'm trying to tap into the brain waves of, of everybody who's listening. What about proof? Difficult things happened. I didn't handle them. Something painful happened. I couldn't handle the pain. I ran to. So, so you're saying you're saying our belief system is predicated upon the fact that I've been in a situation already before. I failed it. Right. So now you're trying to tell me that I should tell myself that I didn't fail it, or, or that, that I'm not going to fail it. Next I'm not going to fail it again. The proof is there. The statistics right. show I'm a failure. How do you now? You want to convince me otherwise? By the way, it's a very good point <laughs> because there's two ways to look at ourselves: spiritually and physically. And the easier is to look at yourself physically. As you said, I believe in myself based on my history, yeah. based on my traumas. And based on people who, are, who I see are just like me also, who also fail. Statistically, there's failure. Not Actually, success. even science tells us today that what's create your belief system is combination of thoughts and actions, but emotional experiences. Okay, so that's part so of the So if you have emotional experiences from your past, which was f connected to failure, feeling nobody, feeling zero, feeling nothing, feeling unaccomplished, feeling less than. So those actually are powerful scars or traumas or junctions in my past that becomes reality in my head. So how do you go beyond it? It's a very good question. It's a very good question. This is the practical question that people are, I mean, it's inspiring to hear it. Aitan's sharing the concept, inspiring. We all believe in it. It's part of our Kabbalistic foundation. Yeah, but, you know, after the show, I'm going to go back to my life with my limited belief systems. What's the, what's the unique, how do you snap that? Okay, so, so there's many gateways to break through the beliefs, the, the old belief systems, okay? There's many gateways to access, to hack the old belief system. Can you share three? Can, can we, just before we ha, ha, uh, mention the tools, I want the audience to relate to what a limited belief system would be. What, what are like top three? Can, can we just say top three so people can relate I to it? I don't deserve success. I don't deserve to success. It, doesn't, it can be in anything. It doesn't, okay. not just financial. I don't deserve a successful relationship. I don't deserve. Okay. It's, All right. Okay. I can't. I'm not capable. I'm not capable. One is I don't deserve. One is I'm not capable. I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not capable enough. And you're saying people don't, uh, some people won't realize that that's inside of them. You mean it's a subconscious. It's an unconscious. Absolutely. And unconscious. the third one, the one that we spoke before is a, it's too painful. Whatever. In the process of success, I can't handle the pain. I can't handle okay. the so rejection. So there'll be pain that I'm afraid I won't be able yes, to handle. With that. Exactly. Okay. What about relationships? Just to, before we move on to the tools, relationships, big problem for people. Why can't people find uh, the right relationship? So forget about the ones that are happily in a relationship. People or, who or are dating. Unhappily. <laughs> 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 Even forget about them for a moment. Let's just talk about people in their 20s and 30s. We deal with them all the time. Uh, Want to find the soulmate. Why can't they find it? Let's just throw, what's the top one out there? What's the belief system? I'm not worthy of love. I, I, I Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Is that before I mentioned say this what is, I was going to say? This is like family feud. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't believe I can offer a lot. Okay, that's a good one. That's a big one. I cannot. What can I offer? That's good. After the initial impressing period, <laughs> what can I offer? I that's think people are afraid of being vulnerable and intimate. Really, they like to be. They like the superficial. Yeah, I want to be on a date, but yeah. I don't want to have to go home with someone and have them tell me where to go and what to do and when to be where. Okay. Or to go back to what I said, the people believe that they cannot tell the, the pain of vulnerability. Right. Okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I think something I see a lot is people are, um, people have a low... Uh, threshold? Not threshold, no. <laughs> what I'm thinking about, they, they just don't value their, their... They don't value themselves, so they are putting out a vibration and an energy... And is attracting an abusive relationship. I get this a lot. Emotionally abusive, 
unavailable is a form of being abusive. People who don't get back to you, that's a form of abuse. Uh, people who are trying to change you, your religion. You know, I heard the other day someone's like, I'm dating someone who wants me to change my religion. That's a form of abuse. There's all forms of abuse. Why we attract those kind of people is there's a part of us that feels comfortable with abuse. There's a part of us that feels comfortable with drama. There's a part of us that, again, not, we're not shaming. We're not blaming. We're saying there's always a part of us that finds comfort in the chaos. So therefore, there's a signal that we put out there. Why, the why would we find comfort in the chaos? It's not that I want chaos because the other option, being vulnerable and equal, Seems more in painful. the perception of that person, it's more, more painful. painful. Okay. Right. right. So they're picking between two types of pain. Exactly. The pain they're familiar with and the unknown pain, which could Absolutely. be really... There's too much risk there. Yeah. It's, it's less uh, risky to settle for the pain you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Even, even anxiety. Anxi addiction to anxiety, it's a thing. Right. But anxiety gives you pain. Why would a person be addicted to anxiety? Because being present and whatever it means that letting go of control, it's too much painful. So I already get the energy from being anxious and try to figure out what will happen in a second and tomorrow and so on. People are addicted to stability. People need to know what to expect. Well, and Rav used to say they prefer to hug their chaos. Exactly. Hugging your chaos so is their, as long as it's predictable. Because as long as their it's predictable. belief system, somehow it's less pain than the nun. Yes. Right. Okay. So All let's right. find let's... few gateways to penetrate beneath the limited belief system and to reach the soul belief system because our soul belief system, which is our true potential, is unlimited. Okay. So how do you break through the limited belief system that affect our limited mind to the soul which is unlimited? So let's speak about three things. Let's start with three. <laughs> I'll start with one. <laughs> <laughs> One is go to the pain itself. It means, let's say, I realize the, reali the reason I'm not going to the next level in relationship and thinking limitless or in business because I am afraid of judgment and rejection. So go back. It all requires some time and meditation. It doesn't have to be 30 minutes. It can be 10 minutes. Go back to moment of rejection and judgment, which that's the pain that you're running away from. For example, close your eyes, use music. If you, if you are a student of Kabbalah for a long time, you would use the Zohar. That's un, unbelievable. But use music, relax, envision that past rejection and pain that you run away from and tell yourself, I love it. I can handle it. So much blessings come with that. Again and again and again. Instead of running away from those things that you're afraid, mm. how do you increase your vessel? Facing it, welcoming it, and tell yourself, I can handle it. Through this, I will have gateway for blessings. What makes me limited, I'm running away from it because I believe I can't handle it. So that's one. Nice. Nice. But by the way, just to engage our audience, if there are questions you have or comments based on what anybody here is saying, please post them. Uh, if you like the fact that we brought Aton on the show, share the post. If there's a low amount of shares, they'll just tell us not to bring Aton back. <laughs> that's, that's, we, just, we just follow the data. And we just follow the data. I know. I, you know, I, I, as a teacher, my, Right now, as Eitan's talking, I'm thinking about all of my students who I wish were hearing this, and I would love to tag them in the post, but I can't do that because that would be incriminating them. <laughs> they, they would look like I, it would look like I'm telling them they're limited. If you know someone who has limited, who, who you, they ask you for help and advice, and you hear in their stories that they're blocked by some invisible perception of themselves or of their past or of their abilities— Share this with them. Ta let, let us be the messengers for the, the, the inspirational support you've been trying to give your friends that they've not been open to. Let us be, let us be that messenger. Yeah. Number two. Yeah. Number two. Gateway number two. Actually, before even number one, I would recommend everyone that wants seriously to work on himself, write down a list. I can't handle the pain off. Mm. 
I believe, not that I can. I believe I can't handle the pain of, for example, mm-hmm. what is your pain, David, that you cannot <laughs> handle, that it's tough for you oh, to handle? Oh, you're, we're going there. <laughs> <laughs> What's my pain that I can't handle? <laughs> okay. Let me think from... No, a you can handle everything that you believe you might believe you can handle. Um, letting go... I mean, I have to think about it deeper, but the first thing that comes to my mind is... Letting go of some of my freedoms, my ways of doing stuff which provide for me freedom. The idea of losing freedom, for me, uh, sounds suffocating. Okay, that's, thank you for sharing. <laughs> for me, I would say, when I'm trying to achieve things and things go out of my control, I'm losing patience, so I can't handle the pain sometimes of not being in control. Very nice, very nice. Asheva? I think mine is really super obvious and simple. It's rejection. You I cannot handle the pain of I rejection. I, I have uh, evidence in my life that I didn't handle it well. Mm. And therefore, mm. I, am, I, I enjoy, by the way, mm. creating reasons for people not to reject me. Well, hold on, say that again. You enjoy creating reasons for people not to reject you. Yeah. It, uh, in a positive way. I, I don't, you know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, my opponent has helped me spin it. So especially, that, especially as a Pisces. As a Pisces, good, as a good Pisces. Yes. <laughs> to only give people reason to accept and love and welcome and appreciate. Sure. No reason to reject me whatsoever. No. no. You're very neutral. For the sake of sharing. You're very neutral. I mean, neutral in a good way. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. And I think it's important as we're sharing that our audience can try to try to go deeper because we really want to make sure we're not just background noise in their car, background noise, and they're just kind of like it's nice and they're working on something else and listening to our voice. Kind of go deeper with it and, uh, and to think um, what could be the, the pain for them, what could be painful for them. If we can share it, so can you. How's yeah. that? If we can share it in front of thousands of people, so can... So, so let's go to the second one. Okay. So the one that says go straight at pain, okay? Mm-hmm. The, own, the other one is, again, to, to, without meditation, if it's Kabbalistic or any meditation, without meditation, you cannot actually break out in a way of the limited belief system. In a way, we are prisoner of our limited thoughts. We're prisoner, we all are in prison. So in a way meditation can help us to break out of it and then to insert new belief. But for that, it require perseverance, consistency, and repetitive, you know, repetitive meditation, repetitive actions towards that direction. So what I would recommend it's so you decide about one area in your life out of the list the pain I cannot handle. Okay. Do your meditation. Use Anna Bekoach tool, use Zohar tool. If you're not there, just use one of the 72 names of God and get to a state of meditation that your mind, your reactive mind is not controlling you. Even though you might have some thoughts, it's okay. I think now we need to have a show about all those tools that Ethan just mentioned that we've never <laughs> shared with our audience. Guys, we have deep Kabbalistic tools and meditation. In a couple weeks, we, we have, have a class. We, we do a, have a class, that's we, right. Not a class, a show. Yes. We, our show is going to be, a, it's called Dialing God. Okay, and, and, and if you all want to know some of those deeper Kabbalistic tools and meditations. Also, let us know. Like, post it. Yes, I want to know about this. Yes, I want to know about that. We we cater to our audience as 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 faithful Pisces. We kowtow <laughs> to our audience, and we we need your approval. So, if you have a desire for something, then we understand. We'll take it to that level. Eitan went there, so obviously it's a message for us. We should probably go a little deeper with you guys on some of these things. So, if that's something you want, make sure you let us know. All meditations. Yeah. The purpose of all meditation is to break away from the, the prison of the mind. Yeah. Yes, to interrupt the spot. And, and, and when you are in that place, that's the time to be your own artist and to create a new belief system. Right. And you can allow yourself to talk, to program the subconscious mind in the way that you want it. 
we have a way to program our subconscious mind in spite of past experiences. So when you're in that deeper meditation, just tell yourself, actually, that it's not really pain. I can handle it. It's not really pain. All those pains that you're afraid because fear of pain limiting my capabilities. So shifting the consciousness, it's not pain. Like Rav Ashla giving an example. When you put in dirty laundry <laughs> in the washing machine, <laughs> it looks very traumatic for that particular piece of, you know, jeans. <laughs> but if you look at the big picture, it's just temporary time in the washing machine. It, it comes out clean. I when we, we, we look at pain as so horrible, no, it's a temporary discomfort. What you need to focus is in the clean laundry. So how your life look after this temporary pain? <laughs> that's more important, and that's the belief system. In the belief system, you should feel the joy and the blessing and realizing the pain is secondary and it's and little it's discomfort. So you're saying, she's saying pain now or pain later? It's really the only option. Is that sad? Is that sad? What I just said? That, that didn't sound inspiring. Kind I thought it was. Of. I thought it was gonna like come out inspiring, and then I just saw like your face. I was like, mm. well, <laughs> no. I'll tell you what it made me think of. To be honest, is um, having children, pain now and then pain later. <laughs> You're like, <laughs> no. The the pain. Obviously, I mean, this is something I think that Rav Ashlag talks about as well. The pain of childbirth. It's the the, or it's. I think it's in the Zora. Actually, it's like. It's terrible, but the result is the most unbelievable result that there could be. And I, when I was giving birth, I kept telling myself, it's about to be over. It's about to be over because it, it can't go on forever. Somebody's got to be, you know, someone's got to be born. But the, the idea is that, and, and I've seen this. I don't know if you, you see this in, in the students that you work with also. Some, some of us, some people prefer constant dull pain mm -hmm. and other people mm -hmm. want to really bad are, are willing to embrace that and they think that's what we're talking about you can have a life full of dull pain all the time which the pain is running away from the pain or you can be willing to embrace it it may be a sharp slap but it's worth it because the result is no more dull butter knife to the side. I want to. I want to. I want to just say something interesting. I know. A, a, besides Eitan, thirty plus years of studying Kabbalah, and obviously this is the foundation of everything we teach. We're all exposing ourselves to other modalities and learning from different wisdoms because that's the best thing we can do for our audience. Just being Kabbalah tunnel vision, <clears throat> as powerful as it is, is not going to is not going to be the the greatest thing. We 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 immerse ourselves in many other things. I remember a time that you said you went to a workshop. I don't know if I'm allowed to say the I name. I think it's better that you better, don't. Better than, well, not that it was good or bad, but you went with several other teachers. Three day, you went on a three-day workshop, totally non-Kabbalah, right? Yeah. Who, who was it? Was it Marcus? And you weren't Batia. there. Shiva, and Batia. That's right. And they did belief system work, right? They, they did a lot of work where it had to do with belief system. Anything from that that you can share, both positive and negative, so we can kind of show what other other teachings are teaching that is also helpful and add it to, to what we're talking about. Because I think it gives social proof also when we talk about how other people are looking at it. And you, you immerse yourself three full days with other public speakers looking at what they're doing. Um, obviously, we learn from that how powerful Kabbalah is, but I think it's also valuable to kind of bring that other angle in there. Do you remember? What, was that last year? Two years ago. Two years ago, I think... I think absolutely. We're totally open to experience everything that is out there. All right, it was a three full days immersed. Because it's experiences of people and we all completing each other and right. we all connecting to each other and you can learn from everyone. And the one who is not learning from everyone actually is not a student of Kabbalah. Exactly. Really. Exactly. So, um, yeah. So, so I think one of the benefits I personally got from that particular workshop and seminar is is to be clearer about traumas from the past. Mm. It's not that I want traumas from the past to define me, but ignoring it, it like it doesn't exist will not if you let you recognize what belief system you need to work on cleansing. 
And so that's what they did. They used to bring people up and and force them to be clear for them to be clear about their it's trauma a, to 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 face the to face the trauma and to deal with it right. and to deal with it and through dealing with it actually it's part and not being afraid and not running away from it it less controls you nice. but the fact that we very often spiritually say no the past is the past your soul chose this path <laughs> you have tikkun right, forget right. what happened in your child sometimes you do need to know mm. in order to know what to work on That's important. Even though we know Kabbalistically that our soul chose our parents, our soul chose our traumatic experiences, but it is important to know, I think. That's important because, yeah, because in Kabbalah we learn to, about our past in such a way where we think, okay, we can move on now because we have certainty that it was for the good. But we're also saying we don't want to downplay and discount the past. So there is a time and place to revisit it, face the trauma, Uh, and, and accept it and do the meditation that Eitan talked about yep. in, before moving on too quickly. Absolutely. And I, and I can tell you, in my own process of spiritual growth process, as a student of Kabbalah, as a teacher of Kabbalah, at period of time that any time I would have undesirable feelings, I would say, ah, just negative feeling. It's not coming from the light. I want to ignore it. I want to push myself to feel differently. Mm -hmm. And I've been forced through my own personal process to realize that before you cleansing feeling, you need to embrace them. You need to feel them. You need to accept them. Because the light behind those feelings exists only if you're willing to feel the feelings. And actually, it's back to the concept that we said before. I cannot handle those feelings. So I need to be able to handle this feeling, sadness, pain, hurt, heartbreak. I need to be able to feel it. And then beneath those feelings, you'll find the light. So you're saying that part of what makes the pain last is the fact that we're not actually dealing with it. We have a Absolutely. question here. Somebody's saying, how do you know that the pain will go away? The reason it doesn't go away is because we're not delving into it and, and going through that healing process. I have, some, I have somebody made a comment on my feed. Uh, I'm afraid of loving, and I'd love for you guys to comment on this. I'm afraid of loving something or someone and then losing them. And we get this a lot. Of caring too much. That's a big one. <clears throat> yeah, that's a big one. That's a big one. So, yeah, what do you want to do with that one? Yeah. I'm afraid I'm going to sound insensitive. I'm going to... Pass the buck? Pass the buck to Eitan, right. unless you want me to be... I thought know? that's what you were going to do. I was going <laughs> to... Let it trickle down. Eitan, you start. We'll let it trickle down. <laughs> okay. So, listen. <laughs> the price the price of any real relationship, can be love relationship or can be friend relationship, is the potential of getting hurt. Okay. Because there's no real relationship if you're not getting closer to someone. There's no real relationship. Nevertheless, nevertheless, if in your mind you know that if your intention is right, by you getting closer to someone, you're also getting closer to your soul because you're more of a giver and you're connecting to the light. And even though the pain that you're going to get through the rejection there it will open your heart to the next level of love and friendship in your life. Because if your agenda is, I'm just afraid to lose this relationship, it's limited. If you know at the end of the day, the goal of all goals is to open your heart to true love in your life, regardless how and what. And right now, that's the person in my life, even though it sounds external, but that's the only way. The only way, actually, to have any real relationship is to trust the higher power. Mm. That you're moving <laughs> forward, not just towards them. You're moving forward towards the depth of your heart. And if you're not willing to do it, you're basically not connecting to yourself as well. Uh, Can I say my, my trickle down? less sensitive uh, comment? Absolutely. I remember uh, friends of ours were about to get married. and um, This is now? Uh, 15 years ago, 12, 10, oh, 15 years ago. Mm. And the the groom, I don't know how long it was before the wedding, at some point before the wedding, he was sharing how hard it was for him to open his heart and 
and decide that he's ready to get married, even though he'd been dating her for I don't know how long. And he shared that someone had shared with him that the, the turning point for him was, and this I also took into my own um, personal process, was life is painful, right? In general, life is painful. If you're willing to take the risk in the relationship, at least you know you're going to get love and pain. But if you're alone, you don't have the love and the pain. Like relationships come with pain. There, it's growth. It's a, it's a. There's struggles, and and we rise above, and we triumph, and we, you know, then we get to the next level. But the idea that you can have both love and pain is better than just being with pain. And and to me, that was uh, like again, it's worth the risk. May I, I'm going to have to be vulnerable. Yes, I'm going to have to be vulnerable. But the payment is much greater than the risk. So. Here's my spin on it. Be <clears throat> going back to when Eitan asked me what I'm afraid of and was losing freedom, I've used my desire for freedom as a way, now I realize why, because it just clicked for me. Why do I value freedom? Because every time my opponent is trying to give me some kind of a limited belief such as this, such as my opponent might say, well, don't get too close, you'll get hurt, or don't do that, it's going to be painful, whatever. I know that as soon as my opponent kind of gives me that explanation, that limitation, it even though it sounds good in the moment to not to kind of be protect protecting yourself and be safe, something gnaws at you. And every time you don't pursue that greatness or that next level because you're afraid of it, it gnaws at you. And there's this shame that gnaws at you. And there's this like feeling of uh, that you sold regret. That yourself short. Yeah, it, and it gnaws. And it's a consistent gnaw. And what happens is it's a very consistent gnaw. People don't realize it, but it's kind of like just someone just gradually sucking your life from you. And people don't realize it. I've learned that that gnawing is something I don't want in my life. So as soon as Satan, uh, Satan, the opponent, that's what we call him, this code name Satan, as soon as he throws something at me that I feel is limiting, I immediately go back and say, nope, I want to be unlimited, so therefore I should break this fear. Therefore, I should apply whatever concept that we're talking about. So my way of looking at it is saying, yes, you can play it safe. Don't go down that path. It does look good. But I also would tell my student, observe the gnawing that happens afterwards. In fact, I wouldn't even try to inspire them to, to look for love. I would say, no problem, play it safe. Let's do an experiment. Tell me after seven days, 14 days, if you've observed the gnawing, like a little pecker, like a little like bird that's just pecking at you. And even though it's okay, it's not so painful, that long-term pecking, <laughs> long-term gnawing is a very traumatic experience. And people don't realize that. I, I can tell you just to continue this thought. Yeah. I can tell you from my own personal experience include relationships. When I was the show so personal. I mean, yeah, when I was <laughs> trying when I was trying to control the situation to be the way I wanted in relationship, it was not just nauseating. It was not just painful. Again and again and again. What's the end result? If you look at actually Go back and check cause and effect. The data, the data. What does the, the data, data say? The data is <laughs> major care. <chaos. laughs> That's the data. Right. So even so playing here it we're safe. Talking, yeah. So what are we talking really is about? Actually, I can handle pain, so it will be painful, but measurable. Right. I can't handle it. I'm running away from it. Major it actually, chaos. It, it major chaos. That's so the actually, point. The it increases concept, the pain. Actually, yeah. actually, it's a lose lose. Yeah. You're thinking small, you're achieving small with more chaos. Yeah. Shifting the belief system. I can handle it. I'm willing to go towards that pain, letting go of control, getting closer to people, being more vulnerable, willing to face rejection, willing to actually things don't go according to my plan, willing to admit wrong. Temporary difficulties but long-term expansion of horizon, of potential, of thinking big. Playing it safe it actually doesn't end up safe, right? It's so actually I think more dangerous. It's very to dangerous play it playing safe. it safe because so the belief system is if I play it safe, I'll be safe forever. And I realized how powerful that was because it triggered a memory I have because in Kabbalah 2, Kabbalah 2, for those of you who, who, are, who are joining us, Kabbalah 1 and 2 is 
the next level of everything that we're talking about on this show. And in Kabbalah too, there's a class about reincarnation and death, and it's probably one of the most powerful classes. Uh, and one of the things that we talk about is uh, suicide. We talk about suicide and what it means and where it comes from and what happens to the soul, which is very fascinating. And this one person in my class who was a therapist said, I, I gave an explanation of what the suicide is and what happens. So that therapist went and used it, that concept with one of her patients who was contemplating suicide. That patient the next day told the therapist, ever since your explanation, I've decided I, I want to live in this world. And so she came and told me that. So what was the explanation? It was a very simple explanation. And it's actually worked several times because I've learned in our Kabbalah One classes, there's always one person that's, that contemplates death in a serious way. And I've had them many times come to us. I'm sure you have, you both have, where they come and say, you know, I, I really thought about uh, leaving this world, but Kabbalah helped me change that thought. So what did we share about suicide? The idea was that if you think the pain is overwhelming and you can't handle it anymore, the limited belief is, well, by ending my life, I end the pain. What we learn spiritually is that your soul actually comes back and has to go through the same exact process again and come back to the same moment when you're going to be 33 years old again and feel unsurmounting pain. So when I tell people who think about leaving this world, kind of even in a nonchalant way, I say, look, it's not a problem, right? But are, are you okay with coming back and going through the whole thing over again and facing the exact moment? A little harder, actually. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> a little harder. Oh, it's going to be According harder. According to the Ari, Rabbi Isaac Luria, when a person commits suicide, right. actually, the, the journey of the soul, beside the next lifetime, the journey of the soul becomes so much more painful. It's exactly. Mm -hmm. And so what all we're doing with, with people who are, again, this is simplifying it. We're simplifying it. This doesn't go for everybody, but what I've seen has worked over 20 years of teaching this is that people who want to leave this world, they just have a belief system that taking the comfortable route, what they see as comfortable, will end up being comfortable. And when you switch that belief system and say, well, not really, your soul will come back according to Kabbalah in a much more painful way, they go, oh, in that case, well, let me, let me, let me just deal with it now. And that's happened many times. That's happened many times. It's, it's, it's because I, spo I, I had a few conversations with people that had thoughts about committing suicide. And the same thing, like you say, David, one thing that they all have is, I can't handle, handle it anymore. Right, right. So I can't handle it. Mm. So the belief that they, they can't handle it, actually, causing them to think so small about life, about everything. Right. Yeah, that's powerful. That's powerful. So basically, if you look at committing suicide versus the opposite, being unlimited and accessing your potential. So I can't handle it as suicide. Bring it on. I can handle everything that I need in order to access my potential. Even imagine daily meditation, not being specific about specific pain, that starting today, please, the light, allow me to access my potential. I know it means facing a lot of challenges, but with your strength, I can handle it. Bring it on. That type of energy you're sending to the universe is energy of miracles and blessing comes my way. I can't handle it. Energy, it's limited life. It's ending life. So, so staying, in a, staying in the safe zone of relationships or with business or my career or my passion is, is quote-unquote suicide of that, of that realm, of that topic. Relationship suicide, business suicide, it's the same thing. And, um, and it kind of just triggered something again in my mind, which is, oh gosh, I, I, I forgot it. It slipped. It'll come Elisheva, back. Elisheva, on it. to you. Eitan, do you have a number three? I've been taking notes. Number three hack to Do you have any questions on the Kabbalah it? feed? People are... There is, but I, I want to get to the end of the thought and if we have time for the questions because I don't want to leave everybody hanging. You said okay. you have three, three number hacks. Three, number three is think about us, guys. You wake up. You didn't sleep many hours. You're starting the day and then you meet a student that needs help to break to away from the limited belief system. And you're helping them. And you say, what happened to you personally? After you started your day with low energy, what happened to you, to each one of us? It's a high. It's a high. So actually helping someone else <clears throat> to break mm -hmm. away from their limited belief system, to tell them you can do it, inspiring them and saying those words because words of power, sharing is power, Getting you the greatest benefit 
which is expanding your own limited belief system. So That's pr- sharing. So practically, you're saying starting your day with inspiring someone else in some Absolutely. way. Absolutely. Without forcing it. Obviously, it's easier for us. We can just pick up the phone and call a student. Not everyone else has students. But everybody has a husband, has wife, boyfriend, share. girlfriend, children. Co-workers, neighbors. I can already see them getting so excited and they're going to do this tomorrow and they're going to get like a, like a solemn poo face, poo poo face, and then, or some kind of rejection and they're like, I'm not doing this anymore. Just make sure, <laughs> don't be discouraged. If you don't get the feedback you want, I love it because I saw the value of that when I start my day immediately with some form of connecting with someone and, and just connect. It's easy for us. We have students and students want to hear from us so we can just pick up the phone and do that. I saw how different it is personally in my day when I start my day like that versus when I, in the later on in my day, I do that. All right. You want to hear my questions? Please. So we have someone in the feed that's saying that her husband is suffering from an illness and she can't handle not being able to control or make it better. And, and I think that especially in today's times when there is loss of life in a kind of rampage way, seems like it's something that i mean loss is a requires its own unique category i think i don't know that we're so fear, fear, fear of loss and then loss itself fear it's very painful and real situation and the reality that we live in but the question i would ask myself how would i bring to my husband in this case more energy of healing by being plagued with that fear and letting that fear, I cannot handle their pain, their disease, and God forbid the potential loss, is that will channel more energy of healing? Or if I'll work on myself before actually, every day, at least once a day, or sometime I would recommend my student three times a day for two minutes instead of long meditation, I would say, I can handle it. It is exactly the light is presenting to my life exactly what I can handle, include my loved one situations. It's for the good. So ask yourself the question, what will bring more energy of healing to my husband? Making an effort three times a day, I can handle it and it's for my good? Or being controlled by the fearful thoughts? So the fact that I will have fearful thoughts, we all, we are human. But the fact that you're making three times a day an effort to do the opposite, obviously, will channel more healing to your husband. Beautiful. I love it. Before you go to the next question, uh, our, our viewership is way higher than usual. Our comments, questions, shares, and likes are way higher than usual. Uh, thank you. If, if you want, uh, if you're appreciating that we're having guest speakers like Aton on the show, Please let us know. Um, email us, let us know. Comment, let us know. Like this post. Uh, share it. Every time you share it, you do us a huge favor because our audience gets bigger every week. And uh, I, I, love, I love the fact that we have Aton on the show. And I think our audience appreciates it also. Uh, and keep your questions coming. Alicia, you got well, more questions? I just questions? want to point out that this week, you know, we've been talking the last five or six weeks about this time that we're in called the Omer and that it's definitely an opportunity for us to have breakthroughs. We'll, we, we will be and we have been tested and challenged in, in more ways than usual probably. Mm-hmm. This week where the, the quarantine is lifting, <laughs> the, the energy is lightening on Sunday, we have the new moon of Gemini. And whenever we have, I don't know if you realize, David, but we missed the last new moon. We didn't talk about it at all. It just came and went, and we didn't give it any attention or energy. It was so humble. But this this new moon is Saturday night to Sunday night, Saturday sunset to Sunday sunset. And whenever we talk about the new moon in general, it's an opportunity for us to plant seeds for the coming month. So we usually suggest that everyone who's listening is their most proactive, is their most sharing, is does whatever we can, that we do whatever we can to have the most elevated consciousness. Um, will be There'll be a lecture on Saturday night that you can watch on Kabbalah.com. If you're a member, you can, you know, there's a little, already a little banner there that you can check out the new moon of Gemini. But what can we look forward to? I mean, what when you think month of Gemini, what are the opportunities that we can take advantage of that we should be ready for, excited about? I mean, 
the contrast between Taurus energy and Gemini energy is huge. When does when does the energy Sunday. start? Sunday night. Sunday. Saturday night. Saturday night until Sunday night right, for twenty four so, hours. Mm -hmm, is yep. it a forty eight hour month? No, twenty four hours. hours. I think what's nice is is small wins, and uh, we, you just gave our audience an anchor time, because telling our audience to be spiritual or to capture something for thirty days sounds overwhelming. But I would tell people if the only day you're going to be spiritual, if the only day you're going to go deeper in any kind of work or break a fear or maybe make a plan, that's probably what I would do. Saturday night until Sunday, carve out an hour or two that you devote purely to your spiritual work, purely to how you're going to go deeper and push the limits of comfort and fear around what we're talking about. The first day is the sea level of the whole month. So whatever you invest in that day is better than if you had done it on any other day in the month. It's going to carry for the whole month. It's a small win. If you do that on Sunday, this coming Sunday, you'll be inspired to do it on more on Monday or Tuesday. But I'm not going to tell you now, do it every day. Do it for 30 days. Exactly. Because I think people... David's so pragmatic. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's about planting the right seed and saying, only be spiritual in this day. Don't even worry about the rest of the days. Start with that. But make sure... I would put it in their calendar right now. I think people will forget. Yeah. Remind yourself Sunday morning. Yeah. You know what? Right now, put in an alarm or some kind of calendar invite that, that tells you Saturday night and Sunday about the one thing you want to work on or one thing you want to focus on because you'll forget it. After you hear the show, you'll forget it. And then the reminder will come on Saturday and Sunday and they'll reignite that spiritual action. So I think I that's it. it. That's huge. Eitan, what would you say? So the month of, we know the month of Gemini is a powerful month and the secret is beneath the tikkun of the people who are under the sign of Gemini or of major influence of Gemini. Tikkun means of, correction, personal correction. correction yes, person. pers so one of the personal corrections of people from the sign of Gemini is that every time a process becomes slow, they have the pain, with back to pain, they have the pain of impatience and the quitting whatever that slow process to find instant gratification. So we were talking about the pain of impatience. Mm. So Sunday, spoke David about Sunday, what I would recommend everybody to look into is realize that Gemini, the light of Gemini, the light, the blessings, the big picture, the unlimited thinking is within the slow process. The boring, the boring. The boring and the slow process as the most exciting, rejuvenating, promising future. Now, what is, what, what is the test actually? Handling for a little bit, breathing in the slow process, breathe it in, listen to your mind that give you all the option to run away the exit plans, but the light, the treasure hunt is within that slow pro. That's where it's waiting. Mastering boredom. No, I, you know what I, I, what I love about what you just said is that I don't think people think of patience as pain. Yeah, impatience as pain. They think about it as discomfort, you know, I, or they get anxious. or they. You know, but to, to recognize that it's sitting in the impatience is a form of overcoming the pain. That's really powerful. It, it always was part of our education as Kabbalah students in our intense training, I like to call it our training, that we were told to, to master boredom, to, to sit still, because um, we're all kind of type A, especially when it comes to our spirituality. We want to do... Fill those baskets, fill those baskets, yeah. fill those baskets. Exactly. So, so there's always been times where I remember even growing, growing up uh, on the path of Kabbalah, Eitan telling me to do nothing for a period of time, which sounds crazy. But uh, what that does is it helps you tap into the weaker side of who you are and activate the light there. Because I think everyone's always trying to be so productive that there's another, other muscles become weak. And those muscles need to be activated also. It's the, it's the muscle of boredom. Within boredom, actually, there's, tremendous, there's a tremendous gift. Wrap it up for us, Ali Shevet. We don't want to give our audience less. too much. Thank you all for joining us. You may be listening on Facebook, IGTV, or YouTube. You can find us on all podcast platforms as well. You can continue to comment and write your questions on wherever you're listening. 
If you would like, you can also email us at energyboost at Kabbalah.com. Next week, we are going to be talking about finding your superpower. Mm -hmm. So join us next Monday, 10 a.m. Pacific, for the weekly Energy Boost.